What's poppin' is your boy Mike Powers. So, once again, America has decided to indulge in his favorite pastime that doesn't involve hot dogs and seventh inning stretches. I'm speaking, of course, of mass shooting. This time it was a small town of Uvalde, Texas, where recently an 18 year old entered Robb Elementary School and proceeded to murder in cold blood 19 children and two adults. I can't believe I live in a country where children have a real credible threat of being murdered at school. Since the shooting at Columbine in 1999, which left 13 dead, America has seen more than 160 mass shootings. 160! And we are the outlier. Or to coin a phrase, America is exceptional when it comes to mass shootings. No other country even comes close, which begs the question, What's so special about us? I think you'll find the answer lies in our complete and total obsession with guns. Let's look at the UK. Legislative reform to gun laws became a nationwide public issue when in 1996, a gunman killed 16 children and one adult in the Scottish town of Dunblane using a handgun. Victims, family, and the public at large put hella pressure on the UK government. And the UK government introduced a near total ban on handguns within one year now slow down i know america is not about to outlaw all guns i mean americans would just as soon give up baseball apple pie and kfc before they allowed this government to completely disarm them it's what this country was built on complete irrational fear of the other that we must always be prepared to defend ourselves against but it is worth noting that those pussies in the UK, sarcasm, have not had a mass shooting since 1996. So I wonder, which of these two countries is better at keeping their kids from getting killed at school? Hmm, I can hear Cletus now. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. That's your favorite right there, because it's simple. It's like a movie or a video game. A shooter pops up, a hero named Randy in a Leonard Skinner t-shirt, rolls up and hits dude with some John Wick shit, and everybody goes to Chuck E. Cheese. I don't know why. But let's examine this good guy with the gun canard. According to multiple reports, there were 19 good guys with guns inside the school when most of this was going on. That's right, if you're watching this in 2075, just know that in 2022, 19 police officers stood within feet of a man intent on killing eight and nine year old children and stood by and did nothing. You might be asking, but aren't police the bravest and toughest among us? I mean, they seem pretty tough when they choked out and killed Eric Gardner, who was set to unleash mayhem and destroy the entire city of New York with them loose cigarettes he was selling. Derek Chauvin was Rambo level tough when he tortured George Floyd and murdered him over a span of nine minutes on camera while his partners held at bay a traumatized mob. Oh, they were even real tough on that day at school in Texas. Just not inside the school, where their toughness would account for something. No, they were tough as fuck outside, with the parents who were rightfully screaming for them to drop their fucking donuts, and I don't know, go save the fucking children. Oh, they were real tough with that mother when they put handcuffs on her for interfering in an investigation. Well, somebody needed to interfere. The mother, after being freed from handcuffs, scaled the fence, entered the school, and emerged moments later with her two children. She is the real MVP. She is a hero. So what about your good guy with the gun argument? It's proven false. Even with a 19 to one advantage, those cops were too scared to enter the room. Why? Because they were scared of the AR-15. I'm no criminologist, but if 19 cops are too scared to confront one guy with the AR-15, perhaps we shouldn't be passing those things out like chicken nuggets. One of the spokespeople for the cops said the cops didn't go in because they could have been shot. It's your job. If you're not gonna give up the ghost to save innocent kids, then what the fuck are you there for? You got the most authority and the most manpower. You were their last hope. As children inside the classroom where this carnage was taking place, were calling 911 and begging for the cops to be sent in. Always talking about how tough and dangerous your job is. Telling us we don't understand split second decision making. I had to shoot Tamir. We didn't know what he was gonna do with that toy gun. I had to shoot the suspect. I didn't know if that was a gun or a wallet. It was a wallet. I had to shoot the guy. He was driving away. I thought he was gonna run me over. Where I live in Cleveland, we have a famous case called 137 Shots, where after a long pursuit and after surrounding fleeing suspects, who it turns out committed no crime, an officer jumped on the hood of their car 
and fired directly into the faces of the so-called suspects, killing them both. All this while about 60 other cops had this vehicle surrounded. That's when you're tough. When someone is helpless and you got your gang with you. But let some real shit pop off. Like a lone gunman killing children. You do nothing. Your job was to sacrifice your life for those children and you did nothing. Are you serious? We live in a country where an 11 year old girl smeared her dying friend's blood on herself and played dead. That lets you know what this country is really about. This situation was not altogether unfamiliar to her. She instinctively knew she had to do something to survive because she knows she lives in a country where she could be killed at school and she feared nobody was coming to save her. How many more generations of children have to be slaughtered at school or in a movie theater before we decide that regular human beings do not need access to guns meant to kill a lot of people real fast. This is one of the preeminent challenges of our time, protecting our future. And for you idiots that want to keep on bringing up Chicago as a deflection, first off, you don't give a shit about crime in places like Chicago. You know how I know? What have you done about it? Have you gone there to talk to people? Have you donated to a nonprofit that might help them? Have you gone into a prison and counseled men and women who participate in gang activity? No, so shut the fuck up. Secondly, top 10 states for highest gun death rates are Alaska, Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, Oklahoma, Montana, Missouri, New Mexico, Arkansas, and South Carolina. That's a lot of Republican governors presiding over a lot of gun deaths. So spare me the faux outrage over Democrat-led cities and their high homicide rates. Nobody from Chicago was in that school, but there were 19 cops and one gunman with an AR-15. If we can't agree that an 18-year-old should not have access to this kind of weapon, then it's over with. The Second Amendment does not guarantee you the right to own any weapon you choose. And if you think it does, then you advocate for a society where a 10 year old is asking his mother to buy him a bulletproof backpack because that's what's happening. Most of these gun nuts wouldn't bust a grape in a fruit fight and never seen no real hand to hand combat. We cannot allow the most cowardly among us to have control over our gun laws. A coward with a gun might blow my head off or murder 19 innocent babies. But what a coward with a gun won't do, apparently, is risk their life to stop the mass slaughter of children. I see a lot of slack-jawed parents in places like Texas and Virginia losing their shit because their kids have to learn about slavery. All up in the school board meetings. Talk about how they're there to protect the children. And I'm willing to bet next week's cigarette budget that most of these parents would be against any sort of common sense gun legislation. Because for them, the ability to own a portable handheld death machine trumps the safety of someone else's child. You all love gun porn. You pose with them for campaign ads and Christmas cards. Graduation. Hell, y'all even go to the state house and protest with them. Why? Who the fuck knows? But this fixation on killing machines is killing our country. And stop saying that we want to take away all your guns. Stop it. Didn't you say Obama was going to do that? Yes, you should be allowed to own a gun. Yes, you should be allowed to protect yourself. But I don't want the same people who believe Hugo Chavez hacked the Wisconsin voting machine to be walking around with cannons argue with me about that bullshit. Think about it. I believe in the Second Amendment and I also believe in responsible regulation. If I don't speak on this, then why have a mic in my face at all? America, let's fix this and let us not stop raising our voices until we have done something to create a safer America for our children. These children were trapped in a room with the killer for one hour. They watched their friends be murdered. They watched their teachers be murdered. There are survivors who will never be the same. We as a country are only as virtuous as our resolve to take actions necessary to promote the greater good. We are only as exceptional as our ability to collectively solve what infirms us. We are not great because we say we are great. We can only be great when we do great things and when we work to minimize our own self-inflicted wounds. This did not have to happen. This was not inevitable. But a repeat of what we saw in Texas is inevitable if we don't all do something to prevent it. Thank you for connecting with me. Now, go connect with each other.